pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll. Alderman Tobin. Here. Alderman Jean-Francois. Here. Alderman Johnson. Here. Alderman Ram Kassoon. Here. Alderman Kleiner. Here. Alderman Green. Here. Alderman Witt. Here. Alderman Massey. President Rodriguez. Here. Quorum is present. Okay, approval minutes. Uh, we have the minutes from July 19th, 2022. Motion by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Witt. All in favor? Aye. 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 Correspondence. Nothing this evening. For the good of the city, the mayor has a presentation. I would like the... Uh, the Baffa family to join me up here, if they would, please. And Anthony, maybe I'll let you introduce your family. Okay, this is my uh, son, Thomas, my sister, Donna, my nephew, Eric, his wife, Kathleen, and little Antonio. Thank you. Thank you, Absolutely. Anthony. And tonight's one of those hard to say goodbye nights. I read that in one of the articles of the several articles that were uh, written about the Baffa family and uh, over the last few weeks. And um, actually, uh, the restaurant opened, uh, Harry Truman was president in 1951. <laughs> and uh, the next slide is, uh, this is 1958. You know, we were a, um, Middletown's always been an immigrant city. Uh, first German, then Irish, then of course Italian, which I'm more biased to. That period of time, uh, recently, a growing Latino population and a growing Asian population. So like most small cities, or most cities in general, uh, we've been incubators of the immigrant community. That, um, and that's what makes cities livable, uh, what populates us, and what generates an interest in people opening businesses. And that's what the Baffa family did way back um, when they opened 71 years ago. 1958 happens to be the year I was born. So that shows you how long ago this was. And they're located in, as you know, Middletown's Little Italy, just on the outskirts. Um, and most of us in that area, especially in that neighborhood, but throughout the city and throughout the area, uh, grew up knowing Tony's Pizza, Tony Baffa's Pizza. So um, it's a long tradition. Uh, this is a picture of Tony's last Saturday. People lined up <laughs> trying to get in. Right? Right. Uh, actually, it's the Diamond Jubilee in 1963, marching by the restaurant. Um, as you can see, the, um, the restaurant wasn't expanded out at that time. It was... Um, uh, the, the, little, the little restaurant right in the middle, I believe, right, Tony? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And um, so they've, they've gone through an expansion process. So as Middletown grew, Tony Baffa's restaurant grew, and um, we and both enjoyed that growth. And as you know, today, this is uh, Tony Baffa's restaurant. Um, this slide is just to give you a little background um, on the restaurant and the family. Uh, 71 years ago, uh, Antonio Tony Baffa and his wife Antoinette set up a small Italian restaurant on Railroad Avenue in Middletown, having nothing but, as they said, two tables and two nickels to rub together. And their daughter Donna Baffa said their daughter Donna Baffa maybe. Antoinette ran the restaurant while Tony was in the kitchen preparing homemade meals for hungry patrons. Everything was made from scratch, including the pastas, breads, and sauces. Maybe and her brother Anthony. Baffa Jr. continued that tradition of homemade meals when they took over the family restaurant. Their parents passed away in 2012 and 2019, respectfully, and their children, with their families of all of their own, have chosen jobs outside the restaurant business, but still at the, help out at the restaurant on weekends. And now the siblings are getting ready to retire, and this is their last month in business here in the city of Middletown. So we wanted to acknowledge that and also acknowledge the founders of, of the restaurant. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Baffa. Um, Mr. Baffa, well known at the YMCA for many, many years. It was honored by the YMCA a few years back. And Mrs. Baffa, of course, the hardworking front face of the, of the restaurant for many, many years. Here we have the entire Baffa family, or maybe not all of the Baffa family, but a good part of them, including their brother Mario, I think, is third from the left, right? Yeah. Yeah. And Mario uh, and Tony and I were all St. Josephites, yep. St. Joseph's School many, many years ago. Donna, I think, is a little older than I am, so we, um, we didn't um, have the shared experience of St. Joseph's, but it was all one big neighborhood over there back then. And this, of course, is the last picture that we have of Tony and, I mean, of uh, Donna and, and her daughter. So 
we wanted to say goodbye in a way for the city of Middletown. And there's a picture of your dad here, I think, saying goodbye. Um, and we also wanted to present you with, um, <clears throat> with a plaque here um, in honoring your, your years of commitment to our community and all you've done, not only as restaurateurs, but as people in our community and uh, keeping our community a, you know, a, a place for people to come, people to enjoy, and, and a piece, place to get a good meal and also good socialization. So we want to thank you. Maria has this. We'll present it to Donna. It also uh, contains the key to the city. Um, I don't know if people can see it, but we'll, uh, it's a picture of mom and dad, 71 years, and a picture of the restaurant today, along with the key to the city saying Tony Baffa's restaurant. So oh, we want to present that. Isn't that nice? Thank this you. The world to thank you. <laughs> Us. That's what I want to say is uh, thank you to the mayor and to the council for recognizing us. Uh, we're all extremely tired from the amount of work that we do, and we appreciate everything that you guys do. So uh, uh, thanks again, and uh, we're going to take a little time to ourselves after we retire. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you all very much. We appreciate you recognizing us. We're going to miss the restaurant, I think. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm used to go, go, go. I don't know. Well, you'll see us around. I guess we'll go to the mayor's now for pasta. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again, everyone. Thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a minute break. Sure. We'll take a short five minutes. All right. Mayor's remarks. Well, the only thing I have this evening... Um, is a letter from Garnett Health um, regarding some changes that they are required to notify both the city, the county, and surrounding communities regarding some change in service at the facility. So I'll present it to Rick for the, for the record. I know we've received a few emails on it, but I don't know. Um, we, obviously, the state representatives are, are also notified, and the county exec. I don't know what uh, we as a city can do, but it's, you know, it's a, it is a private business. Um, but uh, they do have some regulations regarding what services are be, um, being provided. And I assume they're not eliminating um, pediatrics, which some people would call. They're just not doing the pediatric service as doctors. Outpatient. They're doing as outpatient, correct. So, so this might be clear for people to read. If you can post it online, Rick, and get more clarity to the public on what changes are being proposed. And um, we can direct people's comments to our state legislators. And we'll also probably be making a comment on it. So I'll leave the letter here um, for you to post online for people to read. Any questions? Any questions for the mayor? <coughs> Thank, you. Thank you, Mayor. Remarks of department heads. Economic development. Did, did Good Dave want to come up? Yeah, if, he, come if on, you don't Dave. mind, I'm he's sorry. a better spokesman than I am yeah. regarding Run for <laughs> I Downtown. Saw, I saw him in the back. <laughs> Good evening, Council. Mr. Mayor, if you and Linda don't decide to open on Sundays, my wife and I are going to starve to death. <laughs> um, I want to remind everybody here uh, attending tonight and the public uh, you know, in whole that Saturday morning is the 16th annual Marshall and Sterling Insurance Run for Downtown. Most people know that it's a four mile run and walk starting and finishing in the heart of our downtown. But what a lot of people don't realize is how it's so much more than that. You gotta come out, you gotta see what's going on downtown that morning. We have a fantastic post-race party and a great celebration of our community. If you're not a runner, if you're not a walker, you can come down with a $10 donation. We'll give you a bracelet and you can be a part of everything. You gotta see what's going on Saturday morning, run for downtown. And if you want more information, r, the number four, dt.org. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. And to piggyback on that, um, actually everything begins Thursday uh, evening with uh, in-person registration. And that's going to be at the Run for Downtown Park on North Street. And there'll be music and entertainment by Liza Doolittle Trio from 6 to 8. And then uh, Friday, again, registration and music by The Vibe. The Friday night concert is going to be held 
at Run for Downtown Park this Friday from 6 to 8. And then at 8 o'clock, Jefferson Starship takes the stage at the Paramount Theater, and we're all excited. This is, we've been promoting this as the Rock, Roll, and Run weekend, and it's been a, a good co-promotion with, with the Run for Downtown folks, and we're looking forward to a, a spectacular weekend. Uh, we've been posting notices for the downtown businesses, uh, road closures and, you know, things of that sort, and, uh, and where parking can be. Also, um, next week, we are going to have uh, another ribbon cutting. It's the Dance Annex on Railroad Avenue. So um, check our uh, posts on our uh, Facebook, on the BID Facebook and City. And uh, that's going to take place, the ribbon cutting, at 3.30 uh, next Tuesday. Also, on the community development front, um, the CDA project, eight, uh, the Talcott property, closed yesterday, so we have a new homeowner in that um, uh, newly renovated home, and, uh, and we're looking forward to a, a couple more properties that we're doing uh, that will be wrapping up soon as well. And that's all I have for this evening. Any questions for Maria? Old McCliner? Um, hi, Maria. Uh, one, one quick question on the, uh, since the Friday music's going to be at Run for Downtown Park, will, will North Street stay open during that? or? Yes, North Street will stay open unless uh, there is overcrowding, then uh, work with the PD if anything needs to be uh, shut down. But the, I, if you're going back to 2019 when we had uh, the event, we also had a, a street um, art festival that that year right. and then we were con we're gonna we're gonna continue it but then COVID hit so hopefully we can ramp up next year to do the same but right now uh, these are the plans for this Friday okay I was asked that at a constituent meeting yes. so yep wanted to clear it up thank you okay anyone else thank you Maria Thanks. DPW Commissioner good evening uh, council mayor City of Middletown residents, whoever is watching. Um, we'll start off reporting to Alderman Massey about the reservoir levels. Um, obviously, we're having a very dry period in here, and we're very concerned. Our reserv reservoirs are still at 86%. So we're still in good shape. But uh, the trouble with the, with the drought, you don't know when you are in a drought. So this thing could continue on and on and on and develop into a severe drought. So we're watching it very carefully, and hopefully, uh, hopefully we will uh, we will have some rain very soon, and and uh, that will alleviate our concerns. But it's something to concern about. So if you don't, you know, we're not we're not doing any restrictions or anything like that. But if you don't have to water the grass, don't don't water it. You know, try to conserve. It's always a good idea to conserve water. Anyway. Um, Another project, the construction of a 24-inch high-pressure water main on uh, 211 and, Count and uh, Manhagen Avenue. The work is progressing, and now we are just almost at the end of, uh, end of the game in here, just testing compaction and making sure there is no settlement so we can go and pave. And for the council president, unfortunately, the paving is scheduled for the middle of next month. Uh, that's the availability of the contractor, unfortunately. We'll try to push it as much as we can, but that's... Uh, that's where they are, the schedule as it stands right now. Um, Shuangang Reservoir, Shuangang Dams, uh, one dam in there, it has to be upgraded because of certain deficiencies. We have uh, been working on this project for a couple of years for the design, and uh, we had to incorporate um, flow measuring devices to be as part of the project because the DEC required them, so that has been added. The DEC approved the plans, and we're going to be uh, going out for public bid uh, within two weeks. Uh, so before you tonight is council uh, is a resolution authorizing the mayor to engage CT Mail, which is the design engineer, the consultant on the dam, uh, to conduct the construction inspection. Uh, because it's very critical when you start building dams or widening spillways or, or raising dams. That's extremely important in there to, uh, to test the material and uh, test compaction and to make sure everything is done properly. So we would appreciate your support for that resolution that's coming up. <coughs> Milligan paving, I just want to mention, uh, 
you, if you recall the last few weeks, uh, the heat was tremendous in there. It was really uh, in very bad shape. Even private contractors, boys, his people would not come back to work you know, after that uh, warm spill, and he had to get more different people in there. However, our guys, DPW guys in the street department and the water department helping them out, they uh, persevered and they continued to work along with the private uh, contractor who's doing the paving. And I just wanna mention that because now the heat is almost, uh, the heat spill is gone. And I, I just wanna uh, remind our guys in the street department and water department that we are uh, we appreciate what they're doing, and the private contractors as well. We appreciate what they're doing, and they're doing a tremendous job at uh, the risk of their health, but we appreciate that, and they're not forgotten. Um, right now, our milling, our paving program is up to seven, about 70% complete. So there's still some, some areas we have to bring the milling machine back, and we are trying to fit that in the schedule of the milling machine um, to get it done. Uh, there's a resolution tonight awarding removal of debris for um, TAM Enterprises. What happened on August uh, 8th, there was partial collapse of one of the walls for 21 Academy Avenue. So we had to scramble in there, demolish the building because it was unsafe. And uh, we had to work with the Department of Labor in there in order to get certain variances in order to remove that um, debris as asbestos containing material. So before you tonight, there's a request for a resolution to uh, award the bid to TAM Enterprises, the price per ton, and Quest, um, Quest uh, Environmental to monitor the air and sampling and testing. And uh, by the way, this project, this building was budgeted. If, if you recall, it was included in our budget. We have about $900,000 for demolition. This building was targeted by the mayor and I. Um, we slowed down demolishing it because there was a potential buyer for the building. Although we did not see the, the, you know, the potential for selling the building, but somebody believed that he could do something with it. That's why we did not demolish it any sooner because there was a potential buyer for it. But thank God it happened, what happened happened and now the building is down and now we have to take it out. Um, we have a request again for a um, uh, million dollar there for, for just for as a cash flow to sustain the $27 million project that we have for the traffic operation. So it's temporary borrowing. There's going to be long, long uh, term borrowing coming soon in there for this project. Um, and we will discuss that as a separate note later on. And the mayor will be probably addressing that or the mayor and I or so uh, uh, another project, another resolution before you tonight is approving uh, um, agreement with T-Mobile to remove their antennas of our water storage tank on Highland Avenue extension, put it on a different pole, and um, so that we can get to upgrading our Highland Avenue water storage tank, repainting it, um, doing all the maintenance that is required for it, and then they will take that, they'll take the antenna back and they put them, they will put him back on Highland Avenue tank after we're done paving it. So with that being said, we're getting ready. Once we have all these things lined up, we are going to bid, um, put out for bid, public bid, replacing Mountain Avenue tank, replacing Monhegan, uh, replacing uh, High Barney tank, and repainting uh, Highland Avenue tank. So that's, uh, that's coming up very soon, hopefully within a couple of weeks, if we, can, if we can get it together. We have a couple of easements we have to sign, and then we will be able to be able to uh, put the projects out for public bid. So we're very busy. Obviously, you got the $8.5 million in there, bond coming on the first resolution. That's only to allow us to apply for the uh, grant. Hopefully, we'll be successful in getting it. <coughs> and uh, so we're, we're very busy. The entire DPW is, is very busy, as the rest of the city. You can drive around and you can see the construction. Uh, with that being said, I will stop if there is any questions for Jacob. Questions. Thank you, Jacob. Thank Fire you. Chief. Good evening, everyone. We're up to 652 calls for the year so far. We just had a third alarm fire over on DeWitt Street. The homeowner did um, get severely injured, but is still hanging on. Um, as Dave and Maria brought up, the run for downtown, the fire department's involved, other departments are involved. It's a first responder challenge. We hold the cup, Middletown holds the cup. If you think you could take it from us, my man Drew over here 
he's going to be holding the cup at the end. <laughs> I didn't say which cup, right? <laughs> That's right, the beer cup. Um, and for everybody, October 21st, 6 p.m., inspection night for the firehouses. It doesn't interfere with your game, okay? Um, other than that, <laughs> other than that, any questions? Any questions for the fire chief? All right, chief, thank you. City treasurer? Hi, good evening everyone, buenas noches. I just wanted a chance to say thank you for my appointment. I didn't have the chance, I'm sorry that I missed that, that meeting, so I just wanted to say muchisima, muchisima gracias. Um, and also there is a resolution. Uh, we just created sort of a new payroll position, payroll manager position. This uh, position is confidential um, and it is exempt and we got it approved by the state. Uh, we are looking to hire as soon as possible. Our current um, payroll coordinator is retiring in, at the end of September. Um, so this is something that we uh, are looking to sort of expedite in the, in the, pro in the meantime. Uh, the payroll position uh, will entail um, personnel, benefits, uh, payroll budgeting, um, the payroll process. So this person will oversee all these different functions. And we are excited about this because this will allow us the opportunity to sort of strengthen our payroll um, department, well, not a department, a division within the Treasury Department. Um, so I just wanted to see if you had any questions about the position. It will also help the employees, right, throughout the city. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we are looking to serve our city employees and making sure that their information is confidential and also provide them with um, the best benefits um, out there, options out there, and making sure that we follow uh, Department of Labor regulations accordingly. Okay. Any questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. Good night. Police Chief. Good evening. Uh, just a few things this evening. I do have a couple of resolutions uh, being presented this evening. Hopefully you'll be able to support them. Um, the last couple of weeks, we've been doing a lot of our outreach, our summer outreach. We've done several barbecue pop-up barbecues. Um, August 2nd was Night Out Against Crime. It was an outstanding turnout. Although I wasn't there, I'm told everything was amazing. Um, kudos to Sergeant Welch. She did a great job putting that all together and organizing everything. Um, we also just concluded our third class of the Junior Police Academy. Uh, Officer Galley did an amazing job uh, hosting all three of those classes. Each one was a different uh, age group. Um, really great turnout this year. Um, she did an amazing job for us. Also, last week our police officer exam results came out. Uh, the test was given in April. We just received the exam, so or the exam results. So we'll be looking to move forward with the next phase of that um, hiring process, which would be the agility test and background packets. Um, so we are getting a lot of feedback right now from people that did take the exam. Um, a lot of questions and uh, comments on what comes next. Um, last thing I have is. Just for further information on the, the police department, more detailed information, we do have a week or a monthly police commission meeting. Um, it is this Thursday, 4.30, right here in this room, if anybody wants additional information on the police department. Other than that, I have no questions unless you have questions for me. Question for the police chief. Thank you, chief. Thank you. Superintendent of Recreation. Good evening, everyone. Um, before you tonight, we have um, a donation. Uh, we'd like to thank the Animal Health Center for making a $1,000 donation. Um, we're actually going to put that towards uh, an ice skate sharpener for this winter. Um, we're going to have our first season of the ice skating rink. And as you can imagine, there's many expenses that come along with having a, ice skate, a refrigerated ice skating rink. So that um, will be very helpful towards a lot of the items that we do need for that. Um, also like to thank everybody who's made a donation to the Recreation Department for Camperships. This summer we were able to give uh, 13 children uh, one week free of camp um, to either sports camp, spirit camp, or our little people playtime. Um, also like to thank Recap who lightened our load on a lot of the uh, parents applying for scholarships because Recap was very giving this summer with sending kids to camp for full weeks as long as they applied and qualified uh, under them with their financial need. 
Um, update on maintenance. Will Sawyer Field, if you haven't been by, go by during the week uh, in the evenings. It is very crowded. It's great to see the field up and in use and the concession stand going. Um, kids are out there practicing. It looks great. Uh, we are still watering the field. Sorry, Jacob. We are trying to conserve water, but being it's a, a new field, um, we do got to keep that grass and let it set. Um, but we are being conservative with it. Um, <laughs> Concession stand is almost complete. Uh, the, there you got to install a counter and a few more pieces of metal need to be installed to get the concession stand in. Uh, bathrooms are functioning, uh, but still need dividers in them. So it's a little bit more work on the bathrooms, but they are functioning. The kids can go to the bathroom and there is running water in there. Goal posts were actually delivered today. Uh, we've had the bleachers. Our maintenance department is going to install and assemble them um, within this week, and then next week is going to be the installation of both of those. Um, Davidge Park, if you've noticed the caution tape, we did take out that old piece of playground equipment. There was a lot of pieces missing, and it was so dated we couldn't update and get any of those new pieces in. Um, so last year, um, Christine Brinkerhoff did put in for that new equipment. It's been on back order, so it's finally in. Um, our maintenance department did what we had and install. Actually, I spoke to them today, and it's starting tomorrow on that new piece of equipment at Davidge Park. If you go by the pool at Frank Shorter Way, uh, you can see the walkway is done. Um, they are just beautifying it now, adding wood chips in it to give it a better look. It's unfortunate, please get the word out there um, that have people use that walkway and keep them out the street. If you see somebody, just let them know that's what it's there for. We are looking into getting a sign for people who are walking so they can see that sign when they're coming to use that walkway and avoid the roadway right there. Um, there was some concern about dead trees at Academy Avenue Park and the wood line in Davidge Park of the houses. Uh, we are scheduled to get those trees down. Um, we don't have a date, but we are on the schedule. Dog Park, a lot of concerns about the water. Uh, right now, the water on the inside of the park is shut off. Uh, thank you to DPW, the water department, who put a shut off valve in there. Um, we right now they have to change the spigots that are on the inside so there's an automatic shut off to prevent a lot of the puddling and pooling and the flooding that's been happening in there a um, lot of complaints always on that water but what's happening is people go there they turn it on they leave it it pools it runs it runs it runs doesn't get the dry and you have a big muddy mess but there is water on the outside of the dog park there is a water fountain for people and dogs a smaller one for dogs so you can get the water when you are there visiting um, and just with our maintenance updates a big thank you to John Bianchi and the maintenance crew I got to be honest I didn't think Will Slayer Field was going to be ready by this season but it is ready, so thank you to John, thank you for our maintenance department, thank you to Jacob and his guys also with their assistance. Um, camps wrapped up, sports camp, spirit camp, little people camp are all done. Huge thank you to our staff, it was a great summer. Um, Jim Kelly, our longtime director, did retire from sports camp. Um, we did have a new director coming in this summer who was learning. Um, Hopefully we'll have him for a few years before he retires. But um, it was great. Thank you to Monhagen Middle School, their food services and their custodians. They were wonderful with assisting us at sports camp all summer, giving us the hot meals. That was a great addition to it. Um, and please pay attention. We're gonna be sending out emails to anyone who has registered this past summer with our deadlines changing. Um, I know it's hard. A lot of families are paycheck to paycheck and make the weekly payments, uh, but there is a lot of work on our end on getting the camps, all the registrations, all the immunizations up to date. So we are going to push that registration deadline up instead of that Friday at noon. We are going to push it to the Thursday. So that is cutting back. We do get those at least 10 phone calls of very angry parents that can't get their kids in camp because they missed that deadline but we're gonna be giving parents a year's notice on this one, so be ready. Uh, playgrounds and Friday, uh, we are going to be revamping our playground program. 
it's hit and miss. We go to some parks during the day and there's nobody there. But then you go to uh, Maple Hill or Davidge and our counselors are nonstop with the kids. Uh, so we are gonna be looking to revamp that program also for next summer. And pools, our last thing uh, program open this summer, uh, closes August, Sunday, August 28th is our last day of pools. Any questions? Any questions? All my way. It's, uh, it's a shame nothing's going on this summer. You know? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing for the kids to do, <laughs> wow. ever. Um, can, can you give your best estimate on like total pool attendance for the summer? You had to guess? I Sorry. could, it's more of a, what we're bringing in um, that I have on what the money's coming in rather than I mean attendance. Attendance, oh, attendance oh, okay. I, okay. I don't know, no. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's all right. I took a shot. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? All right, thank you. Great mm -hmm. job. Thank you. All right, city clerk. Uh, just a quick reminder that there is a primary uh, early elect early voting for the 18th congressional district primary underway at the Middletown Senior Center. Uh, primary the voting will go through Sunday, August 21st. Take a look at the Orange County Board of Elections website for exact hours, and then the actual primary date is August 23rd, and voting will be at the uh, throughout Middletown uh, from 6 to 9 p.m. All right. Any questions for Rick? All right. No public hearings, remarks of Alderman, Alderman Witt. Uh, thank you. Um, just very quickly, uh, wearing my daytime hat, um, just to remind everybody that the first day of school is Tuesday, September 6th. So um, there's information about going back to school on our district website and on our Facebook page. We in, uh, invite anyone with questions to please call your buildings. Uh, there, those buildings are staffed all year round and it's better to get uh, the correct and accurate answer more than one that might be just speculation. Uh, also tomorrow night is graduation and I believe the number is 22 more kids who will be uh, earning their diplomas tomorrow so congratulations to them. Thank you. That's awesome. Alderman Green. Thank you. Uh, first off I want to thank Alderman Kleiner for handling our constituents meeting solo while I was on vacation. Um, which I always seem to do right before the run for downtown. So I always eat way too much lobster and seafood and get nice and round right before I have to do a, a four mile uh, four mile walk. We'll do. We, let's call it that this year. <laughs> um, so <laughs> I'll be there nonetheless. No way. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. We'll see. You know, spirited walk. Um, no, I, I really am looking forward to it. It's going to be a great uh, event this Saturday. Um, and uh, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Paul McCliner. Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you, Rick. We were headed out for early boating um, about five o'clock tonight, and I heard this strange noise, and I look up, and there's a blimp over our house that I think was much bigger than the house. It blocked out half the sky, so I don't know what it was about, but the Goodyear blimp was uh, circling through town today. So, uh, but uh, the people for early voting were excellent, so uh, I want to thank them for the work they do. I um, also want to thank Senator Scoofus, who did a town hall uh, at TAPT, um, I think it was a couple Thursdays ago, but he, um, he was really excellent, and uh, I'm hoping we will definitely have him as our new state senator and uh, I will see people at the run for downtown that's that's a great event and really everybody should get down to party hardy on that day um, and speaking of uh, parties I just want to mention that uh, today is the 53rd anniversary of Woodstock it's August 16th and uh, he, my, my mom went up and helped at the medical tent. Uh, I worked for Michael Lang for almost two months, and I didn't go to the festival because I knew what was going to happen, and I, uh, it, it was just uh, going to be a little too crowded for me. But I did take people up and drop them off, so uh, it, it was a big Hudson Valley event, and so I just want to mark the anniversary. Thank you. 
<coughs> Rank and soon. Good evening. Um, I'm excited about the run for downtown. Um, I don't know if I can run. I've run it once, and those blisters lasted weeks. But uh, maybe walking this time. Um, my kids are uh, helping out to, with a water station, so it should be a fun day, and the weather looks fantastic. Um, for business for the third ward, we'll be having our monthly third ward meeting next Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. at Maple Hill Park. And Alderman Johnson has requested a blueberry cheesecake, so that's what's on the menu. That's right. What want. So put it on the calendar. Um, that's really all I have. As for back to school, according to the stores, that started on July 5th, which was <laughs> completely out of line. Um, but, yeah, we're wrapping up this summer. I hope everyone has uh, an enjoyable last few weeks before we go back to the the madness of the school year. And that's all I have tonight. There's Thanks. Halloween candy already at the stores. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Holman Johnson. Thank you. Uh, congratulations to the Baffa family. Um, they're moving on, but I think they've created a very iconic experience for those of us who've lived here all this time. Uh, with respect to the Way We Onda project, I had the opportunity to review uh, the remarks submitted by Senator Skoufis as well as Alderman Kleiner, and I found both to be both complete and compelling. So thanks to you both for representing us the way you did. That's all I got. Alderman John Fassois. Yes, uh, good evening. Yes, I had the opportunity to uh, attend the, the uh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> uh, yeah, not out against crime. So I want to kudos to the police department. Uh, not too long ago, folks was talking about uh, defending the police, you know, and, and now to see the community come together and uh, there was a lot of folks out there and everyone had a good time. The kids was having a good time interacting with the police uh, department. And it was, it was great to see, you know, hopefully everyone that was thinking about defending the police would think twice. Thank you. Alderman Sparrow, <coughs> Tobin. <laughs> I go by anything. Yeah, the night out against crime was great. Thanks, thanks for everybody put it on. It was great to see the whole community there, the whole larger regional community out. The kids having fun, shooting baskets, interacting. Uh, they had the canines there. It was uh, very cool. Uh, food, very nice and perfect weather. I uh, also like to thank Tony Baffas as a you know Lions Club. We meet there once a month. We've had many a good meal and conversation. I'm sad to see them go. And uh, also like to thank everyone that has uh, you know has been helping out and all the, the departments in the city. They have they haven't skipped a beat, especially during this uh, you know tremendous heat wave we had recently. I know I haven't mowed my lawn in a month because <laughs> it's not growing. And uh, so I'd just like to thank everybody for pitching in. Hopefully, I'll, I think I'm working a water station for the run for downtown, so I'm not going to be running it. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I uh, just want to reach out to everyone. Everyone, uh, my sister passed away last week, and uh, everyone sent text messages to council, everyone. So um, I thank everyone for reaching out to me. Um, she was diagnosed with breast cancer nine years ago, and she lived for nine years. They, they gave her one to two years, so um, she she lived. A, she was a fighter. She was fighting right to the end. And I want to thank everybody. Text messages, calls. Rick came to my house. Um, it was great. Great to see the uh, community come out and reach out and uh, uh, to my family. Um, Tony Baffas has the best real estate agent in, in Middletown. I feel like the Grim Reaper. I sold um, Lounsbury's, I sold uh, Red Barn, and now Tony Baffas. But they became, when I dealt with them, they're like an icon and, and a landmark in that building. And everybody's going to say it's the Baffas building forever and ever. And the new buyers are going in there, they're putting a restaurant, and they reached out and said, they, we even want to keep their staff because how they work together. So um, we're hoping to connect both of them and after the closing and uh, have the um, have the staff even stay on, so for, with the new restaurant. Um, and that's it, new business. Good evening. We have a resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt authorizing the issuance of eight and a half million dollar bonds for the water line replacement. The resolution possible by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Green. Let's see if uh, Alderman Johnson stepped out. He just walked out. He's going to be done. Yeah, on the phone? He's coming back now, I believe. Okay. I'll wait for him. Okay. Any questions? Sorry about that. 
We're just doing the first resolution. Aye. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Graham Cassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green accepting a $14,000 grant from the Orange County Youth Bureau. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, second by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Graham Cassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner amending resolution 174-22 accepting a donation from the Middletown Elks Club. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Wrong. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Cassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. A resolution sponsored by Alderwoman Ram Kassoon accepting a $250 donation from the Middletown Lions Club to support the Junior Police Academy. Alderman Ram Kassoon, seconded by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson authorizing a $5,377.50 budget transfer to purchase an employee ID card system. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, seconded by Alderman Kassoum. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois authorizing an agreement with Rand Commercial to serve as a broker for the City of Middletown. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean-Francois, second by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean-Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin accepting a $1,430 donation for the Parks and Recreation Department. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, second by Alderman Witt. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt accepting a one thousand dollar donation from the Animal Health Center for an ice skate sharpener. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green establishing an account line for the New York State Pave Our Potholes program. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Jean Francois. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner creating the position of Administrative Educational Finance Research Services. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Kleiner, seconded by Alderman Ram Kassoum, any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoum. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoum authorizing an agreement with T Mobile to temporarily re relocate antennas. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Ram Kassoum, seconded by Alderman Johnson, any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson authorizing a $9,325 budget transfer to purchase an ice machine. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Tobin. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Jean Francois authorizing budget transfers to cover unanticipated increases in fuel costs. Resolution by Alderman Jean Francois, seconded by Alderman Green. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin awarding TAM Enterprises to remove debris from 21 Academy Avenue. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Tobin, second by John, Alderman John Francois. Any discussion? Bro. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. 
Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt authorizing $1 million budget transfer to be used as temporary seed money in order to pay current invoices to WSP and future invoices for Boyce Excavating. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Witt, second by Alderman Kleiner. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Carries. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green authorizing an agreement with CT Mail for construction, <coughs> administration, and observation. Resolution sponsored by Alderman Green, seconded by Alderman Johnson. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin? Aye. Jean Francois? Aye. Johnson? Aye. Ram Kassoon? Aye. Kleiner? Aye. Green? Aye. Witt? Aye. President Rodriguez? Aye. Local laws. We have a local law sponsored by Alderman Johnson updating the Commissioner of Assessment Charter provisions. Motion by Alderman Johnson, second by Alderman Green. Any discussion on the local law? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Carries. Audit. Mr. President, I move the accounts be audited, the claims be adjusted, and the city treasurer be authorized to issue warrants for their payment. Resolution responsible, Alderman Johnson. Second by Alderman Ray Kassoon. Any discussion? Roll. Tobin. Aye. Jean Francois. Aye. Johnson. Aye. Ram Kassoon. Aye. Kleiner. Aye. Green. Aye. Witt. Aye. President Rodriguez. Aye. Move for adjournment. So moved.